Hello fellow grave crawlers, and welcome to ZTV Reviews. I am Paper Zombie, your host with you as always. And on today's episode, I'll be reviewing the 2024 survival horror film, Never Let Go. But before we dive in, as a heads up for any new grave crawlers, my reviews are chock full of spoilers. So if you don't want that, it's advised that you go and watch the movie first, then come back and watch this review. Other than that, let the review begin. Never Let Go introduces us to Mama, played by Halle Berry, and her fraternal twin sons, Samuel, played by Anthony B. Jenkins, and Nolan, played by Percy Daggs IV. They live a secluded life, in a house deep within the forest. The reason for their solidarity is because a supernatural entity, known only as the evil, rose up into the world. If the evil touches someone, it's able to possess them. And when it possesses a person, it forces them to kill every person in sight, no matter who they are. There's no limit, except the population of the planet, for how many the evil can touch and possess at a time. So that's what it did to basically spread across the world and kill everyone. Mama and the boys have survived for as long as they have because the house they live in is special. We're not told how or why, just that it provides them safe haven from the evil. As an extension of that, whenever Mama and the boys leave the house to hunt and forage for food, they tie ropes around their waist that are connected to the house, and it grants them protection. Now, Mama is the only one who can physically see the evil. Sam and Nolan can't. And this eventually leads to conflict. See, Nolan, the youngest of the twins, begins to wonder if the evil is real or just a figment in Mama's imagination. It leads to him locking Mama in the greenhouse one day and cutting her tether to the house. But Nolan doesn't know that that's exactly what the evil has been waiting for. Up until this point, it's been on Mama like white on rice, taunting her at every opportunity it gets, torturing her by appearing in the forms of her dead parents and husband, and promising her that one day, one day, it's going to finally get her. And when it does, it's going to make her eat her babies. So when the evil arrives in the greenhouse, talking about Bad little goat caught sitting in my chair. Let's see that tush. And I'll make it so you can't sit. Mama has to make the ultimate sacrifice and take her own life. Her death sets off a chain reaction of events for Sam and Nolan. When Sam falls ill, the responsibility of finding food falls solely on Nolan. So he combines his rope with Mama and Sam's to allow him maximum distance to search. The extended tether distance lets him reach an empty roadway that he had no idea existed before. Feeling like he has nothing to lose, he shouts for help. But when nothing responds, Nolan returns to his search. Upon making it back home from the search, though, Nolan encounters a hiker who was drawn to the area when he heard Nolan shouts for help. But Sam thinks the hiker is the evil in disguise and shoots the man with a crossbow. A tethered Nolan trails after the fleeing hiker and finds him dying but having already dialed 911. Nolan steals the hiker's backpack, which has much needed food and supplies, and leaves the hiker to his fate. But later that night, as Sam sits on the porch of the house, a girl finds her way to the property. It seems that she's been waiting on her father to return from his hiking trip, but hasn't heard from him since he left her in the car. When the girl realizes that Sam is holding her father's flashlight, she puts two and two together and runs. Sam takes off after her, but the girl runs beyond his tether's reach. So Sam takes a risk and removes his rope to continue the chase. But he quickly finds out that he was duped, as the evil reveals 
that it was the girl all along. And since Sam is unprotected, it's able to touch him. This leads Sam back to the house, where the evil drives him to kill Nolan. But Nolan is no punk and is able to fend for himself. So Sam decides to kill all that noise by setting the house on fire and waiting outside. He knows that if the fire doesn't kill Nolan, it'll destroy the house and the protection it provides, leaving him as easy prey. The evil knows this too, and as the house's protection begins to fail, it appears to Nolan in the form of Mama and tries to lure him in close enough to receive that bad touch. But there's a sort of prayer room that the family uses that no one is able to lure the evil into, trap it inside, and pray over its body. This lets the house give the last of its power to protect Nolan and vanquish the evil. In the fire ruin aftermath, Nolan is rescued from the prayer room by paramedics who have arrived at the house. We discover that there is a functioning world out there that's still full of people untouched by the evil. Sam is also rescued by the paramedics, and as he and Nolan are airlifted to the hospital, we find out in secret that the evil is still very much alive and well inside Sam. And it's on this sinister note that Never Let Go comes to a close. Personally, I thought it was a pretty solid movie. The slow burn pacing was just right and gave the tension and terror its time to build up to a pretty good climax. The story was also solid, giving just enough for the viewer to understand the situation and follow along, but leaving out the rest to make the viewer wonder how the situation got started in the first place and how will it end. The acting in this film was top notch in my opinion and continues to prove that yes, we can have an effective horror movie with a predominantly African-American cast. And big shout out to Anthony B. Jenkins and Percy Daggs IV as Sam and Nolan. These boys single-handedly carry the movie from the halfway point to the end, and they do it exceptionally well. The Evil was a good, unique villain that gets to play on that line of, Am I real? Or am I just a figment of this woman's imagination? I like how it was portrayed in the same way that people have been told that evil operates. It's always around you, trying to tempt you, tease you, and always waiting for you to fall off the righteous path so it can swoop in and devour you. On a scale of one to four, I give this movie three stars. If you're in the mood for a slow burning, tension inducing film that doesn't cheat with a sloppy story, throwaway characters, and a bunch of jump scares, this is definitely one to check out. And that'll do it for this movie review. Thanks as always for joining me, and I will catch you next time.